Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of High Top Sports. We're going to have a fantastic show today. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe if you guys are all brand spanking new. We're headed to 20,000 subs, and we got a lot to talk about. There are some visitors happening this weekend. I do want to talk about that for the 2020-25 recruiting cycle. I think I just said 2020 like 19 times. But anyways, talk about who is visiting, what it means, and then get into 2025 recruiting cycle a little bit because we know how 2024 finished. We know how ahead of the game that Billy Napier was for the recruiting cycle in 2024, did it play, play out like we wanted it to be? Something we need to discuss, something we need to look into. Again, is it worth getting this invested because of the transfer portal, because kids can just bail out? It's a tale of oldest time. we got to go over it. And then also, there's like some drama happening with Ron Roberts, the our new linebacker slash executive coach slash defensive coordinator, co-doc defensive coordinator slash new tri- This guy's got like 19 titles. With Auburn, Auburn is cleaning house, which is another interesting thing that's happening. So we're going to discuss all of it. Again, be sure to smash the like button. Happy to have all of you guys here. Good to see you. Happy Friday to all of you. But without further ado, let's dive right into the first order of business, which is the list of recruits that we'll be visiting this weekend. So shout out to the guys at On3 and 247 for having this list, compiling this list, letting us know. They said they, you know, obviously if anything changes, they will be updating this list. But what I wanted to kind of take a look at and what intrigues me about this list is there's one 2024 guy, and that is Caleb Rillos, the tight end from Air Force. He's visiting amongst these recruits. He is from the transfer portal. So we know we had the slew of guys come in last week. Nothing has really came of that. Those wide receivers, uh, CJ Daniels from Liberty, he seems to be taking a ton of visits. It felt good at one time, but it seems to all die, die down on the, on, the, on the forefront. So my reason for bringing all these things up is it, may, it appears the portal has died down. What we have done in the portal That seems to be the effort that we're going to make. Now, there is this weird, you know, scenario with Alabama that's happening with the 30 days. So that could spike things up a little bit more. I think they're waiting to see who hire who gets hired as the head coach before they make any drastic changes. But I know there is some kids moving around. There is some conversations happening with with a few Alabama's players across the entire nation. So that is going to be a little more on the hush hush and on the down low. They're not taking visits at the moment. So, but in, in regards to the big picture of the transfer portal, I think we're done just from how it looks. I mean, again, this weekend, a ton of recruits coming in. And I believe we have until January 15th or 17th when the recruiting class comes to a close or the transfer portal, you have to be enrolled or you miss that entire cycle now until May. So, we've got five days and there doesn't seem to be any visits coming in now. Could have some surprise visits. I don't know. But, this tight end being as close as it is feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Um, big time guy there. So very interesting. Take a look at 2025. Now I, I, you see all this here. We've got a couple quarterbacks, defensive linemen. That Jalen Wiggins is somebody that uh, we're leading. The, we've been leading the way for quite some time now. He's going to be meeting Gerald, uh, the new defensive line coach. So we'll see how that transitions. Another name that's not on here currently that we've been following for quite some time is DJ Pickett, five star safety that. Felt like it was the Gator luck. Felt like he was going to be like a Miles Graham or like a DJ Lagway. Somebody who commits early is going to be the staple of that 2025 class. But now he released his top five a few weeks ago. We are not on the top five. It doesn't mean anything. Obviously, we know this with recruiting. But what's interesting with how much effort and energy was put into him throughout this past year, went to almost every game, it seemed like. And now it's gone. Obviously, a lot to do with the fact that Corey Raymond is no longer there. That was a big part of that relationship. So Mr. Harris is going to have a lot of work to do to see if he can make up for what was lost with DJ Pickett. But right now we're sitting at one one commit. At this time last year, I think we had about three or four. I think we had Chauncey Bowens, Miles Graham, and DJ Lagway committed all up at this point, rolling into the season. Now there was a little bit of a cycle. I think there's this, there's the, the last little bit that recruits can visit before the dead period. And this is kind of similar to what we did last year. So having a little bit of a group of guys come in just before it, things go into radio silence, and then things will pick up come May, June, July, which is how we attacked Last year. Now, I do want to talk about that. We all recall what happened last year. We all recall how the recruiting world, the landscape played out. Well, last year, we had our th- five or six in like four days. I mean, I was wearing uh, chef hats. I was cooking up. I was doing flipping pancakes. I had the wife make me pancakes. We're, it was a blast. It was absolute mayhem. As it all played out, we saw how it kind of fizzled out towards the end of the year. A lot of these guys you're looking at right here are no longer committed, right? So, there was a lot of frustration. It kind of really sucked the air out of the room. And there was people always in the comments, and I understand. I, I'm not going to get excited until they sign. And that's c- completely understandable. But 
It's fun to watch. It's fun to be a part of it. It, it seems weird. It's like, why be committed to so long and then end up flipping? Because again, something that I credited Billy for last year uh, during this recruiting cycle was how early he got involved in the game. Landing those guys early on in June, being able to go into Friday Night Lights with a pretty heavy recruiting class, and then go into the year with your class damn near established, my thought process would allow for you to pluck and pick other five stars. It, com- it went the complete opposite direction. Our, f- our five and top tier guys got plucked away from us. Now, some of it could have been due to uh, the production on the football field. Some of it could have been due to just what other schools were able to offer last minute, provide a hope, provide a, a sense of, hey, we're new. We're, we're, this is what we're doing here. The likes of Florida seems like they're going in the wrong direction, right? That pitch ramped up towards the year because of the production on the football field. That's something we always talked about as well, too. Well, it's not going to matter what happens on the field. Yes, but if it's the second season and things don't look like it's moving the right way, that's when the production on the football field starts to affect recruiting because Auburn had a hell of a recruiting push there at the end. Although they didn't finish much better on the football field, they can sell hope. We're going to get into Auburn here in just a minute. Uh, And same thing with A&M. They're in that weird scenario right now where they can sell a new dream. They can sell a new uh, prosper pipe dream that kids will be fine intriguing on top of throwing cash and cheddar at them at them as well so does that going to change is that going to affect what billy napier and co do this next staff are they going to follow the same rhythm because that was something that was talked about as well too early on i think they had a presser and he stated multiple times we're ahead of the game we're farther along than we've ever been and it felt like that and that was what was exciting felt like they did everything right except close but I think it's something to say. I think Ali Pete came on the show and she said it's better to play defense at the end than it is to play offense. So if I had to guess, I would believe that moving into this next season, the focus is going to be somewhat similar. But how do we play defense better? How do we position ourselves to play defense better towards the end? Now, a lot of the production on the football field is going to ride on this more than I think it ever has before. I would usually say it's not going to make a difference, but I do believe that this is going to have a bigger of an impact than ever before because of the situation that Billy is in. We understand the hot seat that he is in currently. How much hot is it? Look, that's something I've been talking about as well too because with all these changes they've made, it seems like it is a lot of work and a lot of you know moving things around to just flip it on its head after this year. You guys know how I am. Obviously, being the sunshine pumper, gator believer, wanting Billy to to do things well. I've stated this before. With what is coming in with LJ McCray, DJ Lagway, I, I want to see this thing work. And I just I feel like giving it Miles Graham, I mean Aaron Childs, this this group right here, Fletcher Westfall, excites me. And I I know you, I know you don't want to hear this. I know we want to win, and I want to win too. I believe, look, we're Depending on how this offseason goes, depending on these, what these changes do, I think you know we could have some success. That would settle the crowd a little bit. It'll settle the mob a little bit. Not everybody, though. Not everybody. Again, a lot of question marks here. But things feel like they're building the right way. doesn't feel like it's a quick fix. It feels like they're, they're, they're starting to kind of get some momentum. And the one positive, I think we, we, this is a big narrative from last year, too. Every time we took two steps forward, it felt like we took four steps back. That was something that we ran into constantly. It started with the Jaden Rashada situation, and it just went on from there. It was one thing after another. We get some good momentum, then something would happen, right? We get a momentum, some injuries happen. We get some momentum, guys decommit. We get some momentum, guys flip. We get some momentum, half the class flips on the, on the signing day, right? So now it feels like, okay, we're cleaning house. We're doing this. We're doing that. We're kind of taking some, finally it feels like some steps, and we're not, everyone else around us is taking steps backwards. All right, so let's put let's put it that way. So, again, let me know in the comments, do you think Billy Napier and co. take a different approach to recruiting? Should they? Or should they just take the same approach but adjust it a little bit? Just just turn the knob maybe this way a little, little bit. You don't need to do a complete 180 because I think you had success. Landing two top uh, six recruits in 2024, you damn near could have had uh, three or four top 25 guys possibly if you could have just closed a little bit better. So a lot of things to kind of keep in mind there. A lot of things to keep in mind. I want to hear from you guys down in the comment section. Let me know down below. Now, next up, Ron Roberts. This is an interesting one here. I want to, I kind of want to like tread lightly here because, again, Twitter is a, a funky world. And 
all this started and what and what piqued my interest. Obviously, Auburn is flipping things around. And when Ron Roberts came from Auburn, I was scratching my head because defensive coordinator at Auburn felt like he turned Auburn around, felt like he was in a good position at Auburn to continue to be successful, but chose to leave Auburn to come to Florida, which looks like a, a demotion because he's defense coordinator and he's coming to be the linebacker coach slash co-defense coordinator slash executive defensive whatever. So it's like a demotion, but it's not, but definitely feels like a, a, you know, a lateral move. Let's call it a lateral move in the sense that not necessarily demotion. Yes, he is Billy's guy. I understand all those things, but you are the guy at Auburn. Why make the move? What it, it genuinely, genuinely, I was like, like, it's a really big move. It's, it feels like it's very healthy, but how do we pull it off? How do we pull it off? Well, Twitter gets, gets, a, gets a rowdy. So we got SEC Mike here tweets this. The right, all the way to the right. The last week at Auburn under Hugh Freeze. The offensive coordinator was fired. Okay, no big deal. The defensive coordinator, Ron Roberts, publicly called out culture in the building, immediately, immediately left for demotion. Interesting stuff there. Bombshell, right? Because I was like, whoa. Ron Roberts, like, I haven't heard anything about this man calling anybody out. But I was like, okay, let's continue for a second. In the heart and soul, Cadillac Williams, the running back uh, of the program that kept it together 13 months ago, stepped down. If you guys remember when uh, when they let go of the coach for Hugh Freeze, Cadillac Williams stepped up and just won on emotion and just had this passion for the, the organization at Auburn and, you know, really kind of won everybody over at Auburn, in my opinion. And he has now stepped down. Now, there's some noise on that. Again, I haven't really looked into all that, but there's... He, he stepped away, and sometimes you see guys step away and announce retirement. There's usually like, hey, we're not going to put you on blast, but you need to you need to resign based on what we're hearing. That's kind of what it what seems to be rallying up. What caught my attention? What got me all razzle-dazzled and was like, what, what, whoa, hello, was the defense according to publicly called out culture in the building. So this is a tweet from Ron Roberts, which has since been deleted, but the internet moves quick. And somebody thought it was sort of a good idea to screenshot it, and show sure enough, that it was. So on one seven, which was five days ago, um, tweeted this out because I retweeted. I go, hey, what what happened? What is he referring to? Like, I'm 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 looking up articles. I'm looking all these things up, and I'm like, I don't I don't see anything. This is what apparently he tweeted. Now I know it's very easy to fake these things and to make it look, but a lot of people are reposting these things. And here's what he wrote: ten culture killers. One ego. Two hypocritical leadership. Three, cynicism. Four, selfishness. Five, poor communication. Six, unclear expectations. Seven, lack of listening. Eight, lack of trust. Nine, unhealthy internal competition. And 10, apathy towards culture. Now, if you guys don't recall, when Hugh Freeze was at Ole Miss, he had all the kind of that, that sex scandal and things happening over there, but also a culture issue was something that emerged from that situation. And now you have a lot of these things happening here. And again, I was scratching my head too with the Ron Roberts situation. Hugh Freeze makes you the guy. You definitely improve the defense from what it was with what we already talked about on Wednesday's show, a lesser of an, a talented uh, team than, than most. I think they ranked in maybe the 20th of talent team. Nothing horrible, but not a top not top tier and athletic wise either. Very interesting situation going on. They've recruited like an absolute madman, which had a lot of head scratchers as well. They've landed a lot of wide receivers with no quarterback at play. Didn't really show a lot of excitement on offense, which hence firing of the offensive coordinator. And if you're an Auburn fan going, well, they fire the offensive coordinator. Well, half of the guys left at Florida were due to coaching, cult coaching fires. So if you just fired the offensive coordinator, why was the wide receiver going there in the first place on the hope of who's going to be the guy? Because there is no guy currently. So that's a thought there defensively was probably their best their best attribute. Kept them in the game for most of the most of the year. Kept them in that Georgia game. Kept them in that Bama game. Now you're losing that. You're losing our and they took two of our guys, Morris Williams and Jamonte Waller. Two big studs. Jamonte Waller is going to be an absolute freak. Morris Williams is going to be an absolute freak. And you got to think they gotta, they're they were going to go play for that Ron Roberts. Now he's gone. So very interesting situation developing here. Look, and the reason I'm talking about it, the reason why I'm bringing this up for us is uh because my thing is, is that look, we were we, we you're always asking yourself, what are we what are we getting with this head coach or with this new coaching hire? And I think it also supports that look, he's he's willing he he's willing to leave the situation he's currently in if what that tweet was was true and to become part of 
something different. And I think the one thing we can all agree on, whether we agree with Billy's coaching uh, philosophy and how he's managing the CEO, the commonality that is that, hey, he's a good dude, he's a great guy, and which is a good thing for culture. So that's the first step. That is the first step. That, that is what, I mean, I think if anything, Harbaugh and Michigan proved that a culture wins championships. The, I mean, they had everything that could be going against them, but because the culture was sound, they were able to push through. And that, to me, is exciting to show that this guy is willing to leave what's happening here to come be a part of what's hap- what he believes to be things moving in the right direction at Florida. That's my thought, right? That's my thought. Because how much more is Florida really going to pay this guy? He's making $1.4 million at Auburn. I don't know. You know what? Actually, I'm going to look it up right now. Give me a sec, because if, if it's up. Okay, so I was unable to find it, but it will be something interesting to kind of keep in mind to, to wonder what that will be, because if he's making $1.4 more, is it at $1.4 million as a defensive coordinator, and he's making similar or more, then maybe he didn't come over as a devotion. It may be that that executive title carries more weight than they want to lead on. So that'll be something that we definitely keep an eye on here on, on the channel to, 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 you know, read the tea leaves on what all of this means. It is very interesting. But all in all, great stuff. Things are in the right direction. It feels like we're moving, we're moving kind of business as usual, right? Again, I know everyone has their thoughts and feelings of how Napier and Co. should be, na- should be navigating. Something that I've been watching this consistently is that Napier has con- continuously ignored the noise and just marched to the beat of his own drum. And I think there is a, a pro to that. It's very easy to listen to the noise and allow that to affect you. Sounds like it feels like I feel like Billy just doesn't even like have social media. Like I don't, <laughs> it's like I don't, I don't care. <laughs> we're gonna do what we, we feels right, and we're gonna continue to do it. So I'm excited for this uh, this off season. I'm excited for spring to hurry up and get here so we can get some practice notes. But we still have a lot to talk about. Obviously, the FSU drama uh, has been mayhem. We had fun with it last night in the Collins show. I'm gonna be dropping a video about that later on today because some more interesting details dropped from some local insider FSU stuff that I want to kind of dissect and talk about myself. I think it's very intriguing and interesting and just shows that FSU is on fire. And I like, I, I love it. All right. I, 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 I'm going to be honest. I love it. Be sure to smash the like button, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.